We're here today with Toko Kapia, who was in the United States last year on an international visitor leadership program entitled 21st Century Societies and Cultures in the Shrinking World. Uh, Toko, you're the first person uh, to be interviewed here at the uh, new digital studio uh, at the embassy. So welcome and thank you for coming in to share your experiences with us. Kia ora, thank you. First, ora. great. <laughs> thank you. Um, to start, can you tell me a little bit about the focus of your program, uh, people that you met, places that you went, cities that you visited, your sure. overall impression? Oh, sure. First of all, uh, a big thank you. It was a great program. Uh, cultural, uh, economic, social development uh, for indigenous people worldwide, obviously with a focus of Native Americans. It was just an amazing experience, twofold, uh, obviously meeting the Native Americans, uh, but also the participants. Uh, I was so thrilled to spend a lot of time with the other participants, all from South America. Really? So I was the non-Spanish speaking <laughs> member of the crew. So. Uh, they were very good. They, they only spoke Spanish when they didn't want me to hear anything or <laughs> be part of the team. So I learned a lot from them and a lot from the Native Americans. And of course, all the other folk that helped us on our way because there was an amazing amount of logistics and uh, people supporting the program throughout, mm -hmm. throughout, the, throughout the trip. It was great. Take us through the program a little bit. Uh, where did you start? Uh, what cities did you go to? And what were some of the uh, organizations that you visited? Who were some of the people that you met? Sure, I think the very good structure program. First of all, Washington, D.C. Wow, uh, I think this is a, one of the biggest impacts for me. The ability to have people come and talk to us, us to go to them and really get uh, the, the jigsaw of the American history, the creation of the Constitution, the, the institutions that set up the political system. It's just, it, it all sort of fell into place. Uh, it's quite a complicated structure and it's not until, it's, it's just fascinating being in Washington, seeing all of the, the obviously the, the monuments and the key mm -hmm. buildings and the, and the institutions. It was just, it was just fantastic. It all made sense uh, in the context that it was the lead up to the election. I see. So when people were talking about Senate, House of Representatives, ju the judiciary, that relationship, the checks and balances there, the federal state, the state, all of those levels, it all just, we all just started to go, oh, we got it. Now we understand the interplay between the states and then obviously uh, the American citizens. And of course, the role where Native Americans fitted into that sure. sort of process. Uh, and for me, the, the, that federal relationship is amazing. Didn't, didn't fully appreciate that. And that, that comes out, or well, came out more when we started to meet them and understand how they are managing. Tell us a managing. little bit about that. So, uh, fortunate enough to go through six, seven states, and and each state had their own their own bands, their own people, and they all have different histories and languages, which I did, just didn't appreciate the diverseness uh -huh. of, of the language, almost valley to valley, uh, different dialect, mm -hmm. like it sort of sounded quite weird, but you understand how how, how diverse and how big the country is. Sure. That did make sense. Uh, talking to them and realizing that the relationship at the federal level was one thing, but you see them on the reservation and then those off reservation and just, just trying to live, struggle, get by, and then watching how they're coping with their their choices around particularly commercial development uh -huh. and how that feeds into the social and, and cultural sort of lives that they choose to sure. live from there. That was just absolutely amazing. Now, after Washington, you went to Lancaster, Pennsylvania, Lancaster County. Mm. Um, tell me about that. That was, uh, and, 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 and so we were warned that it wasn't it sort of part of the program as such, but it was a cool entry into it because uh, it was the Amish and uh -huh. the Mennonite folk and uh, we didn't, we were sort of looking at each other going, well, they're not Native Americans. But we understood after meeting them why it was part of the program. Obviously, for geography, sure. it made sense as we're going up. But those folk came over here, over there, a couple hundred years ago, and they have been able to retain some of the core aspects of their, of their culture, of, mm -hmm. their, of their lifestyle. Uh, going visiting them, seeing them with the horse and buggy and, and how they're coping with 
choosing not to opt in to a lot of the the things that we take for granted, technology and the like. Uh, amazing to see how they were getting by and enjoying it and great mm -hmm. people. Amazing, nope. industrious people. Now great. after Lancaster, you went to Minnesota. Uh, Minneapolis? Uh, I have to I have to say, the, the one of the coolest parts was a two-day break in New York. Okay, that was just fantastic. What did, what did you guys do there? Well, we obviously went straight down to Times Square and stood there <laughs> like all the other tourists and uh, took in the lights. That was fantastic. Just just to be there, the, the buzz, the, the New York buzz. Is, is just, it your first time to New York? I uh, was second time. So okay, uh, and uh, just so great. New York's a great city. Wonderful. We were lucky and we went to a uh, show. We, mm -hmm. It was one of our sort of big cultural things. Uh, I chose not to go to a musical this time. I went to a, uh, the Blue Man Group. Okay, great. Which was really just fantastic. Uh, so uh, New York was cool. And then we went to Kalamazoo. Okay. Michigan. I uh, have to say, beautiful country. Uh, flying in, you obviously have big lakes, but I didn't realize the just the little lakes all around Kalamazoo and, and that Michigan area. It actually did remind me of New Zealand because uh, very green, uh, very uh, lots of water, so really nice. And you met with a number of uh, Native American tribes there? Yeah, that was, that was a really good introduction at a number of levels. Uh, we saw the, the communities that they'd grown in, uh -huh. uh, and it was the first introduction to the commercial development, mostly around casinos, mm -hmm. that really was an eye-opener for us. We'd heard about it and and read about it, and to actually visit them in their community area, the area of land that had been reserved for them, or their reservation, and then we were taken to their owned, managed casinos. Sure. What were your impressions? They saw it as a start, mm -hmm. not necessarily the end, and it seemed to be working for them. Good. Uh, employment, uh, obviously dividend flow from, from the businesses. And they would use a lot of those to move into the social and environmental parts, which was just fantastic. Now after Kalamazoo was, was Minnesota. Yeah, Minnesota. And, and you mentioned earlier um, that you had visited with uh, Little Earth of the United Tribes mm. and the housing project that they mm. did and that impacted you. Tell us a little yeah, bit about that. The contrast from the countryside beautiful lakes, moving to a, a, a quite a large city, and looking at a, a housing project that was predominantly Native Americans, and very sad histories of people being moved or, or choosing to move from rural to, to city, city life. Uh, and this, this community, unashamedly Native American, uh, controlled by the Native American, uh, but basically committee, uh, and they had to deal with lots of challenges. They were not the same people. Mm -hmm. They were a collection of different peoples that came into that city. Uh, they were dealing with the normal struggles of urbanization, city life, uh, and, and all the, some of the trappings on the negative side, drugs and violence and crime. Uh, that whatever they've done or they're doing is just a wonderful example for what other parts of the world could do because now they have a bustling strong community, uh, still predominantly Native American, and now they're doing, they, they start with the youth and they do a whole lot of programs. They're looking at developing houses around the complex and getting their people out of the rent or leasing arrangement into buying their own, and they're facilitating that process. So a really, really cool uh, program to to look at for other people. Anything else in Minnesota that struck you? Uh, a beautiful city and it was amazing. I luckily we didn't go in the winter because everyone was <laughs> saying that it snow gets up that high. And so after Minneapolis, you went to Albuquerque, and I understand you visited the uh, Indian Pueblo Cultural Center, and that had a big impact on you. Yes, it was uh, obviously like a little museum, but the the folk who were running that were were really progressive around a couple of things which struck me. First, they were trying to collectivize a lot of the Pueblo uh, bands uh -huh. to work together for the good of this, this, this museum, this uh -huh. center. And in doing so, they were also creating some commercial programs 
property development, um, some other retail type developments to continually booster this centre to be self-sufficient and take the strain off the respective Pueblo bands sure. to fund. And it was a really, really progressive and smart uh, presentation they provided to us. And you could see the proof. It was an amazing centre. Is that the kind of thing that you would, I mean, think about bringing back to New Zealand from, a, from the perspective of a successful model? Yeah, it, it, it is one example. That's, that's a good example. Tourism in New Zealand is, is, is a big mm -hmm. part of New Zealand economy. And in my view, Māori should play an mm -hmm. integral part of that. Uh, it's not as strong as it could be. Sure. And there's things that I think we could look at, and it makes sense that we look at models like this. Now, you also visited Akama, is that right? Oh, that was Sky fantastic. City? That was just... Tell uh, us about that. That was a treat. That was a... Uh, uh, for me living in Wellington and, and growing up in Taranaki where it's very green and lush mm -hmm. and have nice nice uh, waterways and all that, to, to drive for two hours into the desert and then see this effectively a, a, a sort of a tabletop mountain from a distance and then go there and then actually go to the, a little village on top of it and stand there and realise that it's been there for a long, mm -hmm. long time. The traditions, the, the processes and practices that they would have had to work through to survive, to, to deal with water and food and, 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 and attack uh, is just amazing. And they're still there. The village is still there. It's There's amazing. People still live in it. And they've got a, a centre down the bottom at the base. And a really, really cool tourist, but a tourist centre, but also really cool to see them still there and still active. Now, after uh, Albuquerque, you traveled, You left the continental United States and you stopped in Hawaii on your way back to New Zealand. Tell us about your time in Hawaii. Well, great. <laughs> uh, very fortunate to finish off in Hawaii. It's just a lovely place and it's so warm and, and beautiful. Close connection being Māori from New Zealand, mm -hmm. the Pacific, Pacific Island, Polynesian feel. It was just a, a really nice cultural end for the group. Uh, we picked up through our uh, on the mainland area that there were not a lot of in Indian speakers, Native American mm -hmm. speakers. The, the language isn't as strong as they would like it uh, for a whole raft of reasons. And when we went to the Kamehameha schools uh, and, and visited the kids, wow, to see what they've done is just really impressive. Uh, I was saying before we were met um, by a group of young boys doing the hula. Mm -hmm. uh, I responded back in Māori. We were shown around the school. The kids were just... Did it surprise the kids when you responded? Yeah, I, I, it may have, but when they realised I was Māori, they they just sort of taken it as, sure. thank you for responding, but we, we, we expected that. <laughs> uh, and I think there's there are some nice connections there, obviously some old connections, but. A lot of uh, Māori in New Zealand have have close relationships with the, with the Kamehameha schools in particular. They have sent numerous delegations to New Zealand, uh, mm -hmm. studied our Kohanga Reo Māori language nest movement and the Kura Kaupapa, the total immersion of Māori in schools programs, and mm -hmm. also our Māori Wānanga, our Māori universities. So lots of strong links back back to Hawaii. You see the relationship between Maori and the Hawaiians as an important part of the broader New Zealand United States relationship? I think so. Uh, it's it's always been that it's always been there. Uh -huh. uh, it will be uh, fascinating just recently too with the uh, launch of Hawaiian Airlines. Um, just last week actually. So alongside with all the other carriers it's uh, very good to have an, another one, particularly state of Hawaii bringing their own over, uh, I think we're going to have a lot more interaction than we have in the past. Now, Toko, we'd like to learn a little more about you. I understand you're the director of the TUIA group uh, here, and you're a practicing lawyer in, in Wellington. Um, in, in what ways does your work cut across communities, both nationally and internationally? Sure. We, we act with predominantly Māori uh, communities, uh, pre- and post-settlement. That's uh -huh. the settlement with the Treaty of Waitangi claims. Uh, that's a challenging industry because you're seeing uh, a lot of Māori dealing with 
past grievances and try to work through that to some form of settlement with the Crown. And then almost another hard part or a hurdle to get over is what to do next and how to develop. And that was one of the key reasons I enjoyed the trip, was seeing a whole lot of Native American groups that have had some resources from whatever sources and how they've made their choices on how they're going to develop going forward. So for us, working with Māori groups, we've seen both sides. There have been some that have settled for a long time, 15, 20 years, and others that are just coming up to that. As well as that, we've, we're starting to find that Māori uh, engagement issues are becoming more and more relevant, particularly for companies, particularly for the oil and gas, mineral type businesses. So there are some, we, we seem to play a nice bridge between understanding Māori but also being commercially focused and understanding that there is uh, a place for conversation between the two parties where it can be safe to try and find a solution for, for both. Sure. One of the most important aspects of the International Visitor Leadership Program is bringing back what you've learned and sharing it with your broader community. Are there any specific examples uh, of things that you experienced, uh, people that you met, organizations that you visited um, that you feel have enriched your personal or professional life? Oh, thank you for that question. Lots of, lots of things. Uh, I'll start with the participants. Uh, learning from uh, the other participants. So, so lucky to have really cool people from uh, Suriname, Bolivia and Venezuela. And there was, listening to their stories and their struggles, their histories, it, there was, in, in, a, in a nice way, validation of a lot of the things that Māori have been doing in the last 30 to 50 years. Uh, we are a small country and Māori have for a number of reasons, or not, have just just the way it is, punched above their weight in terms of obtaining some of the things that they've obtained. Uh, and the other participants would often say, how did you guys achieve this? How did you get that? And it made me sort of self-reflect, oh yes, we have achieved a lot. Still a lot more to go, but it, it was that sort of realisation from the trip that really was strong for me. Māori are on the right path. We're on the right track. Let's just keep on going, keep on going. And, and that, that message back to them was, we've done it, we've got to here, we're still gonna keep on going, you can do it too. And that was the same, this, is the, this was the sort of conversation we were having with the Native American folk, it was really positive. You play a very important role um, in the business community here in New Zealand, particularly with respect to Maori economic development. Were there any takeaways from the program that you feel you can apply in your work in that regard? Come back to New Zealand, New Zealand Māori industry predominantly being land-based, farming, forestry, uh, fishing, land, sea-based. And in the last 20 years in particular, with the transfer of wealth from the Crown to Māori iwi uh, through the settlement process, the diversification of business sectors for Māori has opened up. So Māori have more choices now. And it is a choice. Do you participate in this sector? Mm -hmm. Or this sector? Or this sector? Māori often haven't had the ability to operate in those sectors. Now they have a choice. They have a choice because the balance sheet can support that or the income from that balance sheet supports it. So uh, for Māori in Taranaki, for example, where approximately 80% of New Zealand's oil and gas comes from, there is no Māori direct participation in the oil and gas sector for a whole raft of reasons. Uh -huh. Māori missed out on the ownership of those and uh, the challenge for a lot of my iwi, because that's where I'm from, uh, are choices around do they participate somewhere in that supply value chain of that, of that industry, for example. And then of course uh, you've got other industries, whether it's dairy, whether it's uh, mineral extraction businesses, those sorts of decisions are, are, are sometimes easier from a commercial perspective, but Māori always see commercial decisions in a wider context or in a, in a wider lens. And that's where I think looking at what the Native Americans are doing, we're just starting to get some of those harder decision 
points in our in our journey mm-hmm. and development. And some some iwi, for example, have chosen uh, some really amazing paths. Uh, there are a number of iwi groups that have chosen to participate in the geothermal energy space alongside state owned enterprises and other private companies. That's an amazing story, choice. Uh, now that's geothermal, it's not coal, it's not other things, but at some point Māori are going to have to be faced with those sort of choices. And without having a lot of history in those sectors, you would, it's, it's not unexpected to have str- have a struggle to, to have mm-hmm. meaningful engagement or informed conversation around that. Toko, you are now part of a large alumni network uh, here in New Zealand of Kiwis that have traveled to the United States on exchange programs. Um, how do you see being part of that network as supporting your ongoing efforts? Uh, and are there any projects that you've considered that you might do with your fellow alumni? First, uh, I'm going to continue to reach out and, and find those uh, alumni. Uh, part, I'm part of the website now and I'm watching a whole lot of projects. It's really interesting. I've been emailing my participants that I mm-hmm. went with, uh, trying my hardest to bring them back down this way, which is great. Uh, I think there's my business operates offshore as well. We, we've got uh, some work in Papua New Guinea and Bougainville, Cook Islands. And I'm now starting to realise the power of, of that network. And I need to uh, work closely with the embassy and the consulate to try and make sure I find those appropriate links. Because I think the more we share the, con- the conversations we're having now and what we've had in, in our programme, it's just going to be all good for, for everyone concerned. I'm really excited because I'm starting to realise that the, uh, the, the alumni that I've already met so far in New Zealand, I can now see where they have gone to mm-hmm. and, 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 and how they have viewed the, their, their experience in the program. So I just want to stay part of it. Uh, I think the, those conversations I was having about, particularly from the commercial decision, those choices and decisions that Māori are going to have now, I think that, or having now and they continue to have, I think that there's something in there about reaching out to the alumni network. I'm, I'm already seeing an idea of bringing some Native Americans here to mm-hmm. talk about these choices that they've had, some hard choices they've had to make. And uh, that will just provide more context and more, just be more informed for our folk. And I think that would be great, that, that, that one exercise. Togo, I can tell this has been an outstanding experience for you. Thank you for coming in today and, and sharing it with us. Any final thoughts? I, again, thank you. Uh, the logistics of moving a number of people around the States. Uh, we didn't miss a flight, a bus, <laughs> a meeting. Uh, we had an English language uh, person with us, Stan. He was just fantastic. He was a great guy. He was an uh, ex-cop from Philadelphia. Excellent. So we were safe, <laughs> which was great, and some great stories. Uh, but just everyone in, from, from, from getting off the plane, Washington, every, every, every visit, I couldn't believe the number of volunteers mm-hmm. that looked after us, that took us home. Mm-hmm. The, uh, the generosity, the positiveness of the people that we met, it really was uplifting. Uh, we, we were in the middle of the elections, mm-hmm. and it was quite a, a buzzy but at the same time sort of not scary but a, a really exciting time for energetic the, yeah there was a there was a lot of energy a lot of com, lot of um hard messages uh-huh. coming obviously from both sides and we were just sitting here as outsiders being lectured on a lot of the 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 politic structure and legal structures of the country going now i understand why everyone is taking certain positions mm-hmm. and uh, and then of course meeting people on the ground the Native Americans just to see their their histories listen to their histories listen to how they're coping and how they're developing again so uplifting and then to come home and realize that we Māori have close affinity to some of those groups but we're so far away 
uh, the participants and the Native Americans and the Hawaiians, when we'd meet, very short time period, we were very close. So thank you for that opportunity. We've been here today with uh, Toko Kapia uh, talking about his international visitor program that he went on last September. Toko, again, uh, thank you for your time, uh, and we appreciate uh, you sharing the experiences. Thank you. It's been great. Cheers.